Hi, I'm Gershon Wolf, and welcome to Modern Music Composition. Well, in my introduction video, I mentioned the first lesson was going to be on scales. And so I'm not simply going to just write out diatonic scales for you and say, hey, here's the C major scale. What we're going to do is we're going to derive the diatonic scales from fundamental principles. And what I mean by fundamental principles, I mean by ratios of frequencies. Well, what is a scale? A scale is a series of notes. Those notes relate to one another through a particular ratio of frequencies. The most important concept to understand here is the relationship between two tones is defined by a mathematical ratio. So let's explain that. Let's take middle C, for example, 261.626 hertz. Let's just call it 261 hertz. If I take a string and I tune that string to 261 hertz and I pluck it, it's going to vibrate at that frequency. And that is shown here with the uh, blue sine wave. It's vibrating at 261 hertz. The most fundamental, simplest ratio I can take of a frequency is <clears throat> the ratio of the frequency with itself and that is called the unison and that is a one-to-one -one frequency. How do you determine it's one-to-one? -one? Well, you just calculate its ratio and that is taking 261 divided by 261 gets you one. So that gives you a ratio of one-to-one. -one. If I want to take the next ratio up from there and that is, let, let, let me um, explain that by, by this diagram here. I've just taken the one-to-one -one ratio. That's right here. The next ratio up is going to be the one-to-two. Let's talk about that ratio. That's the next complicated ratio. That happens to be taking the uh, frequency, doubling the frequency, and finding its ratio. So with respect to middle C, what do I do? Well, I double the frequency and I divide it by or divide it into middle C. And that gets me, of course, I've doubled the frequency, it gets me a 2. So my ratio now is 1 to 2. What is that? That's the octave. So both the unison and the octave are very simple ratios. They're the most fundamental ratios, but they're also kind of the most boring ratios. They're not harmonic. So if you come up with the uh, million dollar melody, you're not going to be harmonizing that melody with unisons and um, octaves. Well, what's the next frequency ratio up from what we've been talking about here? Well, turns out it's the 2 to 3 ratio. Well, how do we calculate that from our fundamental frequency, middle C? I take 261. Here, let me erase this. I would take 261. I'd multiply it by 3 and divide by 2. That's like taking in 261, multiplying it by 1.5. Well, that gets me 391, 391 hertz. Well, if you look at a chart of frequencies, um, go look at your, your favorite chart of frequencies of, 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 of uh, piano keys. Going up from 261 to 391, that's a G. Well, what is G in reference to C? How many um, steps up from C is G? Well, I've got C, D, E, F, G. That's five tones up. Actually, let me diverge here for a minute, just for, complete, for completeness. Let's take the chromatic scale. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, I don't want to erase this, um, A, A sharp, B, and then back to C. So each one of these, this is the chromatic scale, each one of these steps represents a semitone. 
How do I get from C to G? That's one semitone, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven semitones I need to step to get from C to G. Seven semitones turns out to be a perfect fifth. So if I want to get from C to G, stepping up seven semitones, that's a perfect fifth. Well, let's not stop at G. Going from C to G, where do I go from here with respect to G? Well, G, A, B, C, D. D, E, F, G, A, A, B, C, D, E, E, F, G, A, B, B, C, D, E, F. However, that F turns out to be an F sharp because between B and C, that's a semitone, and then between E and F, there's only one semitone, so it works out to be only seven semitones between, well, it works out to, to, to go up seven semitones from B, I get to F sharp. Well, we know that F sharp does not exist within the C major diatonic scale. Turns out, if we go the other direction here, we want to start with F here, so F to C gets us seven semitones, we're going to end up using that F, and we're going to, for now, forget about F sharp being part of the C diatonic scale. Now, if we take these, um, these notes and rearrange them, oh, by the way, this scale as written in terms of perfect fifths is called the natural scale. If we want to create the diatonic scale, we have to kind of mix this around and spell it alphabetically. So we'll go C, D, E, F, F, G, A, B. So let's do that. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. There's your C major diatonic scale derived from fundamental principles. Now, what else do we get out of this? Well, we've actually derived the circle of fifths in this process. How have we done that? Well, I can tell you how we've done it. By the natural scale. We, remember we had C, G, D, A, E, B. <clears throat> now I will continue to go forward with F sharp. And actually, at this point, let me draw the circle itself. So I'm going to get rid of some of this information here. <clears throat> Whoops, there goes my F. That's the frequency, um, how it's derived from the length of the string, uh, tension of the string, and uh, mu, which is the um, density of the string. So just once again, another uh, little quick divergence here. Um, if, if you take an instrument like a guitar or a violin, when you look at those instruments, you notice, hey, all those strings are the same length. Why are they tuned differently? Well, if length is constant, what can you vary to change the frequency? You can vary the tension of the string, and as the tension goes up, the frequency goes up, and you can vary the um, density of the string. So as the density goes down, the frequency goes up. That's why uh, you have a very narrow and, and delicate E string on a violin and a very thick and rugged G string. Um, if the length is the same, these are the other variables that you can play around with. Let's get back to that circle. Let me draw a circle here and try to make one that looks like a clock as I go around here. 
So we'll put C at the top. And let's just go around this. Let's tick tock around this clock in intervals of perfect fifths. So we had C, G, D, A, E, B, the infamous F sharp, or G flat. In fact, we're at, at this point, as we get back up to C, we're just going to be using then um, the, the flats. And so we'll go D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat, and F. Now, in the next video, I'm going to be going into more detail with respect to the circle of fists. But all I wanted to point out was the fact that you can derive any scale, any diatonic scale you want to, just by looking at the fundamentals of the circle of fifths, which was derived from the ratios of the frequencies. And in particular, in, in our case, the ratio of C to G, that two to three ratio is the simplest harmonic ratio. Now that is an, uh, an interval that you would want to use on your million dollar melody to harmonize that melody. As we will see in, in, in uh, future videos, we will do just that. But anyways, let me just show you here. We have our uh, C major scale that we just calculated. We took our natural scale, C, G, D, A, E, B, and then we backtracked on C to F, and that gave us C major. If we wanted the G major diatonic scale, we do the same thing with G. G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, and backtrack on C. Because we all know in the G major scale, F is sharp. So that's it for today. The next video is going to concentrate more on scales, and I'll show you properties of scales with reference to uh, the circle of fists, and I'll bring in some other um, interesting concepts too. So that's it for now, and see you later.